This video is best viewed in full screen. Hello and welcome to chapter 3 of Learn C Sharp. In this lesson we're going to go through creating functions and creating functions with parameters and how to handle return types. A function usually looks like this. You have some return type, either void, int, string, or some custom class. Uh, a function name. Uh, function names and parameter names have the same naming rules as variables and constants from the last chapter. Uh, and parameters have some type and then a name. And you can have more than one. They're comma separated. And for each parameter, you must specify the type for each one. If you do not want to have a return type in your function for your function, then you want to use void. There are two different types of void you can use, and they're both the exact same. Either void all small or vo uh, void with a capital V. They both link to the same class in the system namespace. And if you do not want any parameters, you you just put the opening and closing parameters thing. Unlike Visual Basic, you have to specify that. I mean, you have to put that in. To return a void type to stop the rest of the function from executing, then you just use the return with a semicolon at the end, like this, in that mock function that I've written. And if you want to uh, return a value, like let's say 1, you would use return 1 like what's right here. You can only return a value if your return type is something other than void otherwise your the compiler will spit out an error. If you return an int or any other number style variable you cannot return a string. It's the same thing with strings you cannot return a number or anything like that. Uh, C sharp is type sensitive. Uh, yeah, it's type sensitive, so you have to pass the exact same type or return the exact same type as return value. Um, parameter parameters and functions. A function parameter is just like a variable, except for that it is initialized by the it I mean it is passed to the function by the caller say you wanted to add two numbers to, you had to have a function that added two numbers together you would have two parameters of val of type int whoops damn it oh, well, of type int Re for this one I put a return type of int and then return number one plus no I mean sorry num one plus num two it is it is not uncommon to see that return at, like this return and almost like it's a function a return is a function inside of parentheses that used to be required in very old versions of C is not required anymore but you still see it. It works just the same and the compiler just handles it like arithmetic math. Alright now we're gonna go on to the code section of this tutorial. Welcome to the code section. In this section as you can as you can see I have written two functions. One is called void function and the other is called add two numbers. Now as you can see the void function doesn't do anything really. It just returns at the top and 
the function is just designed to show you how to return a function before it hits the end. Uh, and below it is a console.write line that says this should not show. So if that string that says this should not show shows up in the command line, or then we know something has gone wrong. And the add to numbers takes two uh, parameters. One is called num1 and the other is called num2. And it returns an int value, which is just num1 plus num2. Now we're going to go to our main function. Don't worry about this red circle and the red part right here. I will get to that in a minute. But as you can see, I have a variable called value in which gets assigned the return value of add two numbers and I pass the number one and the number two as parameters so it should return three um, console.write line this it takes the parameter of value I'm sorry we pass it the variable value and it should display the number on the screen then we call void function and then we uh, wait for the user to press any key to continue okay this red circle is a uh, debugger break break point it will stop the code execution at this point and allow you to determine where the code goes from here so now we're gonna start debug start debugging as you can see the command line popped up for a minute and then it went straight to here now we have an arrow here and in the debug section toolbar that's right here it might be in a different spot for your version of Visual Studio and I also have another debug down here but this is way more advanced we're just gonna deal with the basic one up here we're gonna do step in twos for now so as you can see it's moved on to the next code value currently value equals zero but if we step into it'll step into that function and it'll now wind up down here and as you can see num equals whoops num equals one and num equals I mean num one equals one and num two equals two this feature where it shows you what the value is is actually a very good feature when you get into more advanced programming I'll get more in depth on program debugging maybe a lot later I might even put a tutorial on my other channel because I classify debugging as a little bit more of an advanced thing but the basics should be needed to know you should know the basics of it now step into and when we step into after the return and void function I will show you actually that will jump straight to the end of the function and then go back Oh yeah, that's right, we have to step past. Value now equals 3 for value. And now as you can see, the command line now says display is the number 3. So our function has worked exactly as the way we, we have predicted it would. Now we're going to call void function. Step into it. Now watch after I step uh, after the return it goes straight to the end it actually skips over this section of code which was what our warning was and it's not in here and then if you ever want to just continue the uh, uh, program without stepping through you just hit this play button or 
click F5. I mean, press F5 on your keyboard. And that's it.